Good morning, everyone. It's Tuesday, July 11th, 2017, and I hope everyone is having a beautiful day in the Lord. Um, I posted a sunset last night. It was just absolutely breathtaking. Uh, I'm at the Jersey Shore. I was sitting uh, peacefully in a chair with my husband. We were watching the sunset, and it was just breathtaking. Um, I'm sorry I haven't been posting. Uh, I've been just um, really busy doing things. But um, something very interesting happened yesterday. Um, when I'm down the shore here, I usually go to um, a specific Wawa for my coffee. And um, yesterday, as I'm leaving the house, I get an impulse to go the opposite direction to a different one. And um, so as I go, I pull in and I see um, like a bag lady, you know, sitting on the curb as we pull in. And uh, she's got a wagon filled with stuff. And you could see right away that she's homeless because everything that she owns is in this wagon. So um, I parked my car and I walked over to her. And I said, uh, do you need any help? And she says, no. I said, do you need anything? She says, no. I said, um, I said what's your situation? And she says, I'm homeless. It was her and her son that were homeless. And um, she said she's been homeless for two years. So I says, well, where do you sleep? She says, I have a tent in the woods. And I says, does anybody bother you? She says, no. Because I was concerned, you know, because a lot of homeless women, uh, they get beat up or raped, you know. Uh, but she says, no. I says, she says, sometimes, I says, what do you, how do you eat? Where do you get your provision? I said, donations from people. So she says, yeah, people, you know, give her money and food. And she said, sometimes they even give her money for a hotel for one night, you know, so that she can go there and clean herself up. And she says to me, but it doesn't change anything. In other words, it, her circumstances have not changed. So I said to her, do you believe in Jesus Christ? And she says, yes. I says, can I pray for you? I said, will you pray with me? I said, will you accept Jesus? Uh, if I, if I, you know, pray, will you follow along and give your heart to Jesus? And she says, yes. Now, you know, I was wondering, I said, you know, these people that are homeless so many times, they must get approached by a lot of people to pray for them or come to Jesus. I wonder how many times they've done it, you know. Uh, and I, I prayed to Jesus that something different would happen this time so that she could get help from our Lord. So we held hands and... Um, I prayed and told her about the gospel and she prayed the prayer with me and uh, I gave her a few bucks and I said to her, uh, uh, I grabbed her face, you know, with my hand and I, I was bending over, you know, so we were like maybe this far apart, you know, and we had really very good eye contact. And uh, I said to her, Jesus loves you. I said, no matter what your circumstances are, I said, don't give up. Don't give up on Jesus. I said, he loves you. Don't think the world is totally against you. I said, uh, there's someone out there who loves you and is just waiting to help turn your circumstances around. And I could feel that the love of the Lord went into her. And I'm hoping that that takes a root 
to help her in her situation because um, you know if if a homeless person carries a camera around with them you'll see all kinds of people approaching them and like she said nothing nothing changes you know people help her but her circumstances doesn't change and uh, I'm hoping that the love that flowed through me um, when when I said what I said to her because I actually meant it from my heart and I hope that it resonated inside of her because that's the seed that takes root and um, well only God will know because I don't think I'll run into her again but it was very interesting that my route to the coffee shop was diverted and um, I was sent right into that situation so praise Jesus uh, this is what happens you know when you yield and you give your life to the Lord you let him have your way with you and you let him take you where you where he wants you to go so that he could use you to minister to pour out that love to people that are in need okay I have a devotional I just like to say the hour for I apologize for the, um, the so much light in here because I don't have my lighting where I am you know my special lighting is at the uh, north residence so right where I am I don't have that extra lighting to right now we have a lot of backlight so let's say the our father and I'll read the devotion our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil amen thank you father for this day thank you for leading us and thank you that we can uh we're still here to serve you and minister to your children in these last days as we wait patiently father for you to come and take us home we love you so much bless you in jesus name amen okay this is called um divine delays and the reading is from exodus 13 17 it says it came to pass when pharaoh had let the people go that god did not lead them by way of the land of the philistines although that was near for god said lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return to egypt not a day goes by when our plans aren't changed by circumstances that are beyond our control. You know, as we see, people lose jobs, people lose their homes. Natural disasters, house or car problems, unexpected illnesses. Uh, cancer can wipe out your whole life, your whole set of finances traffic jams on the freeway, a friend or a neighbor with an emergency need, unforeseen time demands at work, the list goes on and on. The question is, can we trust that God is in those unforeseen delays, diversions and distractions? A rarely read verse in Exodus 13:17 tells how God led the newly freed Hebrew nation into the Sinai desert instead of around the southeast quotes corner unquote of the mediterranean sea into the promised land why why did he do that so hebrew the hebrews wouldn't encounter the philistines who inhabited that region be attacked and flee back to egypt for safety that's why he did it the Hebrews grumbled loud and long about the Sinai sand and sun, but at least they were alive. If they had met the Philistines, they might have been slaughtered. 
Next time your path is changed unexpectedly, trust by faith that God is in it and that the change was for a good reason. And you could read about that in Romans 8.28. Hope is the foundation of patience. So yeah, if we're down on our luck and um, we have tribulation in our lives and we try with all our might with our own human power to change our circumstances and they don't change, there's only one way to go to save yourself and your soul and that is to take God's route to fix your life because God says you know if you use your own will you will be serving your enemy and he will devour you so there could be a reason that you've been stripped of your earthly blessings it's very possible that the Lord is calling you and um, you know you need to wake up to that fact I mean if you want your life to turn around the Lord has the power to do that the Lord is mighty he can do anything I tell you I've witnessed some things uh, that I never uh, imagined the father would would do because as I was growing as a Christian I was getting to know the power of the father you know my mother was dying and he erased it from everybody's mind the hospital the doctors the hospice everybody no one thought she was dying I was the only one who felt she was dying and then when she passed away um, I didn't get there until an hour and 20 minutes after and her body was as warm as you and, and you, yours and mine and uh, that's not possible <laughs> I actually called the coroner uh, Bergen County New Jersey coroner and asked that question and she said no that if somebody it dies an hour and 20 minutes later you're cold okay so um, yeah my husband was there and he was a witness to it we touched her all over and she was as warm as you and I and the father wanted my last impression of my mom to be a positive one he he knew how much I just totally loved her so he defied the laws of physics to have my very last um, experience with my mother to be a positive one look how much the father loves you that he does stuff like that he's trying to protect you and here it is people try to do things on their own and only the father has the power to do these mighty things so you know if you're experiencing hardship just get on your knees with humility you know come to the father and say admit that you're a sinner tell him from your heart cry cry to him okay because you need to break that shell of pride in order to make a connection with the father okay lip service you could say that salvation prayer if you don't have a contrite heart it's lip service I'm sorry the heart needs to be involved okay and a lot of times the Lord will bring you to your knees to get you to that point to break that outer shell of pride and come to him and admit that he's a sinner make him the Lord of your life he'll wash you clean with the blood that he shed on the cross so that you can enter heaven because if you don't do that you won't be able to enter heaven you won't and believe that that blood was shed to purify you uh, to stand before the Father it's a blood of atonement it's on the altar in heaven and uh, believe that he rose again on the third day and if you do this with a, uh, a humble heart and throw your pride out the window you will be saved and you'll you will pick up your cross and follow the Lord 
Start reading your King James Bible and you will see your life will turn around. The Lord has turned many people's lives around. Many people. When all else fails, you know, you got to turn to the Father. And on that note, I'll say, have a beautiful day in the Lord, people. I love you. I do. I love you so much. Jesus loves you. Never forget how much he loves you. Give out the love. Give it freely. Plant those seeds. God bless.